Hey guys, Jared Wesley here of Live Traders, and it is that time of the week. It is lecture time, and this week's topic, guys, is on how to be a well-rounded trader. You see, I'm getting a lot of emails and comments from folks that, oh, this market is tough, and that market is tough, and all these new traders come in and they're like, Jared, when's the market gonna get better? It's not gonna get better. The market just is. The market is neither good or bad. It's neither one of those things. You see, you live in the market's world. It doesn't live in your world, okay? So you have to adjust to the market. So today we're gonna to talk about how to be a better, well-rounded trader. And what we're gonna talk simply about is how to expand or open or create a bigger toolbox for your trading. See, many traders are one-dimensional. It's like, all right, I trade intraday on a two-minute chart. Other people, I trade on a weekly chart, swing trading. Well, today we're gonna to talk a little bit about intraday trading, swing trading, core trading, but also delving out into different trading vehicles like options or Forex or E-minis or even maybe crypto, okay? Why? Because sometimes, guys, one style of trading isn't doing so well, or maybe the market is not in a giving mood for that style of trading or that vehicle of trading. So you need to have other tools and other things you can, so you can grasp on or pull to, to make some money. So for example, if you're only an intraday trader, well, what do you do on a month when you're struggling or the market isn't very good for your style or your management? You just sit there and just don't make any money? Well, that's not a very good approach. What if you could supplement that intraday trading with swing trading or options trading or Forex trading or E-mini trading? So we're gonna talk a lot about that today, although I do recommend for brand new traders to just focus on one thing for now, but then you wanna also try to expand your toolbox as you gain some more experience. Why? Because this is going to help do two things for you. It's gonna help accelerate your P&L, right? Your profit and loss should grow because you're expanding and also when you do have a down month here or there, the other types of trading, the other vehicles in trading will help pick it up, right? So it's kind of that diversification thing. You know, don't put all your eggs in one basket because what if that basket isn't doing so well? So that's what we're going to talk about today. Guys, if you like these videos, please click that like button, hammer, smash that subscribe button. I really appreciate it. These are some of the best videos on YouTube if you're a hardcore trader and you really want to learn uh, about trading. I am Jared Wesley of Live Traders. Let's get to it. This week's lecture topic is learn to be a well-rounded trader. Um, for those of that took PTS recently, we actually talked a little bit about this. Um, but we haven't talked about it as much uh, as we need to around here. And what I mean is, is Unwall alluded to it last week um, when somebody asked him, hey, how'd you do this month? Um, and he said, I oh, made $21,000. And the question was, was, well, how? You know, intraday trading wasn't so good. Well, it's because of swing trading, core trading, options trading, credit spreads, all that other stuff. Um, so yeah, we'll talk a little bit about becoming a well-rounded trader, becoming a more diversified trader. You know, people talk a lot about that in investing. Make sure you diversify your investments, but we don't talk about it enough uh, in trading. And the reason I think um, people need to do a better job of it is you can't expect one style of trading to always crush it and kill it. Even when you're really, really good at that one style, you will have an ebb and flow. You will have some months that are, are not as good as others. And that's just normal. That's not unusual. Uh, so how do we mitigate that? How do we make sure um, that we pretty much always have a decent month? Well, learn to be a well-rounded trader. So we're going to talk a little bit about that with regard to stocks, different time frames, different vehicles like options and Forex, crypto, etc. But before we do that, we first have to talk about when will the insanity stop? And uh, some of these are just so egregious. They're painful to go over. Other ones give us a little bit of a chuckle. Uh, we had one last week or the week before that was just really, really sad. Uh, and this week's is, is not very good either. It's, it's not a good one uh, in terms of you, you feel a little bit bad for people, even though you know it's their fault you still feel their pain in some ways. And hopefully you feel that pain enough, strongly enough, that you won't ever put yourself in the position that these people are putting themselves in. So here it comes. 
lost $100,000 today in three minutes. Now, here's the thing. Sometimes you look at that and go, yeah, they can afford it. Not always, right? Not always. Uh, and this is a good example of somebody who really couldn't afford it, you know? Um, you know, when you see a comment at the bottom where it goes, I understand why people get suicidal now. That's, you don't, the trading's not supposed to be about that. Sure, it's frustrating at times, but it should never put you in a mental frame of mind where you're that fragile and would ever consider doing something so extreme. Um, but yeah, I mean, the first five words are really everything. I am a blanking idiot, and I truly hope I am the only one today who is this, um, I can't, we can't say these words anymore. My gosh, the PC police, the woke police will have us. But anyway, um, basically, this person lost a lot of money in a very short period of time. I became overconfident in my results and experience and made the stupidest decision of my life thus far. That's a bold statement, guys. When you say that was the absolute dumbest thing that I've ever done in my life up until this point, it's pretty bold. Options are not something to be trifled with nonchalantly. Please trade responsibly. What I found interesting is, is I don't want to say they're playing the victim, but you know, I put in a market order by accident uh, with a ton of money and lost my money while trying to sell too swiftly back into the market immediately after. But I was stunned. So much work down the drain. I blame myself. Here's the thing. This is really what the truth of it is, is right here. I became overconfident in my results. This person was likely already trading too big too soon, but now they really stepped it up. And I want you to think about this before we move along. Why would you ever basically go all in on anything, anything? I don't care how much money you have. Why would you ever go all in? And when I mean all in, I'm not talking about 1% risk, 2%. This person probably lost the vast majority of their trading account, 90 plus percent, 100 plus percent uh, of their trading account. What In what world does that ever make sense? Never, not ever. Even people with bad money management, this, this is extreme. So, I, and that's the whole point, right, Alex? This really wasn't an accident. I became overconfident in my results and experience. And I made the most stupid decision of my life. Not mistake, decision of my life. So don't put yourself uh, in that position, guys, okay? And every week, my goal when talking about that is to scare you enough that you won't even think about it. Because we all have that little temptation once in a while. Don't even think about it, okay? If you're an alcoholic, don't open the door to the bar. It's not worth it. What's inside there can only get you hurt. It's only trouble in there. Close the door, walk away, okay? That's it. Um, can, they will come forever. Somebody just made the comment, Jared, I can't believe these stories keep coming in. Um, I have... Can I probably have five or ten more in in the the vault that I haven't even used yet? I mean, there's so many of them. It's not it's not funny, but it's funny how many of them there are. Okay, all right. So let's talk about becoming a more well-rounded trader. All patterns are valid in all time frames. For those of you that were in professional trading strategies recently, uh, you know this mantra because I must have said it ten times. All right, during the course. Um, but for many of you that might be newer. This is a factual thing. All patterns are valid in all time frames. So if you're trading a one minute chart and it's a buy setup, you're looking for the same attributes, the same things that you're looking for on a weekly, monthly, yearly chart, right? I mean, we're looking for those bottoming tails, change of color bars, support, volume spikes, you know, market timing, multiple time frame analysis, all those things. So when people ask questions like, well, what's the most profitable to pattern you teach or what's the best time frame to trade in? There's no such thing. It's the time frame you master to the highest level. Uh, and this is also true for vehicles and styles of trading. People often ask me, well, what's the best type of trading to start with, Jared? Should I start with options? Should I start in Forex? Should I start with stocks? Uh, should, you know, et cetera and so forth. And there, there is no answer to that. It all comes down, okay, to what are you best at or in your, when you're brand new, you won't know what you're best at or what speaks to you the most? You know, when we talk about intangibles like time constraints, financial constraints, personality constraints, start thinking about your lifestyle. Start thinking about when you, what time of the day you have to trade, when you can trade, how much money you have. And then once you start looking at all those things, you'll be surprised 
the answer will likely jump out at you. For example, it's like, all right, I'll just give you an example. Uh, Jared, I have a day job. Jared, I only have $5,000 to trade with. And uh, I'm not a, you know, I, I, I don't know what style of trading I should do. Well, I'm thinking to myself, okay, well, five grand, option sounds good, Forex sounds good, and you have a day job, swing trading, right? Boom, all of the sudden, we've dwindled it down to probably 25%, right? Something that doesn't require tons of money like options or Forex, because stocks, you're going to need more money most of the time, unless you're at a prop firm. And two, you have a day job and you can't trade all the time throughout the day. So now you're going to probably want to swing trade or maybe scalp the open if you can. So Forex sounds like a pretty good avenue when you're on four hour charts or higher, right? So my point is, is start thinking about those types of things, because when you think about we have stock trading, day, scalping, et cetera, swing trading, core trading, options, puts, calls, credit spreads, whatever, futures, E-minis, people that trade like the NQ, the ES, the YM, et cetera, and so forth, uh, Forex trading, currency pairs, crypto, et cetera. I mean, these are the general, I mean, there's probably a few more stuffed in there, but these are the general vehicles that you can trade. And there are what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven avenues for you to trade here. There's going to be something for everybody right? Depending on, like I said, your personality style, your financial constraints, maybe your time constraints, your intangibles, etc. So you'll be best off choosing whatever one kind of fits in that area um, will be the best way for you to go about it. But that's not exactly what we're talking about today. Today, we're going to talk about learning how to maybe use more than one of these vehicles to make money, okay? So what's the main difference, guys, between these styles and vehicles of trading, right? The answer, not much, okay? Not much. Some rules are different, like pattern day trading rule versus a non-pattern day trading rule. Like in Forex, you don't have a pattern day trading rule. In options, you don't have a pattern day trading rule. In stocks, you do. So there's a difference, right? So you might need more or less money options versus stocks versus forex okay um so when you look at it like that yeah there are subtle differences but big differences not so much time frames not many people trade one minute chats no how about one minute charts jared uh one minute charts on forex for example all right so time frames change pattern day trading rules change certain types of um, phrasing changes like, hey, that's one pip versus that's one R or something of that nature. But all in all, generally speaking, charts are charts and trading is trading. Now, you should love this because this means you moving to a different vehicle or expanding your toolbox is not like starting over. Okay. Yes, you're going to learn like, oh my gosh, I don't know what an iron condor is. What's a put? What's a call? Fine, fine. There is a learning curve but it's not nearly as steep as the curve to learn the charts from day one because trading at the end of the day is trading. And we're going to, we're going to prove that here. Okay. Give me one second. All right. So here's a chart, right? Here's a breakout. There's a stop loss, rip, consolidate, rip, chop, 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 rip. Okay. Can anyone in here definitively tell me what time frame this is with, with absolute certainty? Can you just tell me what this is? I mean, just looking at it, is it a one minute? Is it a yearly? Can you definitively tell me also? Can you definitively tell me also uh, what vehicle this is? Is this a Forex chart? Is this a crypto chart? Is this a, what is this? And you know me, I'm, I like to mess with you guys, right? I mean, can we definitively say what this is? No, you can't. Someone just brought this to your desk. You'd be like, yeah, not really sure. It's just a bunch of red and green candlesticks. Okay, well. Let's take a look at another one. How about this one? What time frame is this? Come on. What time frame is it? What stock is this? Come on, Jordan. What stock is this? Come on, man. What is it? I don't know. 
Is this, is this Tesla? I don't know. Right? What time for it? Is this a daily? I don't know. Okay. Why not? Why don't you know? Why don't you know what this is? Why don't you know? Okay. Because there's nothing to tell you what it is. How do we know? I'm serious. You're going to laugh when I say this. How do we know this isn't the chart of Justin Bieber's record sales over the past 12 years? I'm serious. How do you know that that's not the chart of Justin Bieber's record sales? How do you know it's not the chart of skinny jeans? You don't, right? I mean, you would assume it's not because you're here listening to me and I trade stocks most of the time because it's going up. <laughs> Touche, Miles. <laughs> but on a serious note, we don't know. This could be anything, right? I mean, for all we know, it could be the chart of COVID cases last year, right? We don't know, all right? Here, some of you guys are, it might make a comment because maybe you've seen that chart before, right? But if you hadn't ever seen it before, a stock or an option or Forex or a currency pair or crypto that you've never seen before, you wouldn't know, right? You, you wouldn't know. Okay, that's my bank account. That's not good. Come on, Jerry. This is, no, Jerry, this is what it's like here. Let's be honest, okay? This is your bank account before you get married. This is your bank account after you get married, right? That's more, yeah, that's more appropriate, okay? <sighs> That's not even after a divorce. That's just after marriage, okay? When you see a divorce, it's like one of those climactic downs, like straight down, okay? <laughs> you're doing it right. Oh, you got to leave it for the women in the room. If you're doing it right, yes. <laughs> oh, you guys kill me. So, Jordan will get his moment in the sun. That first one is just a daily chart of Tesla. But he only knows that because he's seen it before. That's a fact. If I asked him, if I, if I changed this instead of Tesla and I made it uh, McDonald's or Disney or Caterpillar or some random stock, you have no idea what it is, okay? But the point simply is it's just a stock and it's on a daily chart, but we didn't know what time frame it was. How about this one? Oh, look at that. It's Bitcoin. Some of you may have seen it. There you go. That's the divorce stage right there. You see that big red bar? That's divorce, okay? Um, but anyway, on a serious note, this is Bitcoin. Could have been anything. So the point I'm making when I go back and say, go back here and say, generally speaking, charts are charts and trading is trading. We just proved that over three charts. Some of them are daily charts. Some of them are crypto charts. And there's one more here. And this is just a five-minute chart of a stock, right? It's all over, okay? Tyrion, whatever it is, okay? Cryptocurrency, whatever, okay? The point is, every one of these is different. The time frame is different. The vehicle is not completely different, right? Because this is a stock chart in the last one, all right? But the point is, is if you can understand what these red and green candlesticks represent, you can chart anything. Literally, you can chart anything. And I'm not joking. You can chart the sales of jeans. You can chart COVID cases. You can chart car sales. You can chart anything. In fact, that's what just about every company does. They chart their sales. So if you can chart it, you can trade it. And if you understand the charts, as we do here, then moving on to these other vehicles should not be very challenging, okay? That's the whole point. That's why we need to be a little bit more diversified, so to speak, because it's not so difficult to do it, right? You wanna to go to options. This, it's a very simplistic word. Now again, is there complexities to it? Of course there are complexities to it, all right? I'm gonna bet that XYZ stock won't go above $100 by say Tuesday, October 12th, okay? Then look at the option to decide if the premium's worth the risk. Does the risk reward work? If so, maybe that's worth it. But here's the question. How will I know if it's a reasonable bet that XYZ stock won't go above 100 by October 12th? The answer's right in front of you. I'll give you a hint. It's in bold and it's in capitals in pink, okay? 
I'm going to look at the chart, right? No, I'm not going to talk about that, Hugh. I don't do sector rotation, okay? I'm going to look at the chart. Well, Hugh is saying, well, you don't know. Well, Hugh, you don't know if you're going to be alive 12 seconds from now. But the odds suggest there's a very high likelihood that 12 seconds from now you'll still be alive, yes? So this is the whole point. We bet the risk to reward, okay? So what I'm getting at is nothing is guaranteed. That's just an asinine, stupid thing to say because nothing's guaranteed, all right? But the point is we have to, we have to base it on something. If I look both ways when I cross the street, there's a very high likelihood I'll make it to the other side. Now, I could have a heart attack or a stroke halfway through and a car could hit me. That was unexpected, but the odds of that happening are pretty small, okay? So what I'm saying simply is the chart gives us a reasonable expectation of what we can expect in the future, right? That's what technical analysis is. Otherwise, why are we here, right? We use past price action to predict future price movement. So I have no idea if it's a good bet that XYZ stock won't go above 100 by Tuesday, I have no idea until I look at the chart. Because the CEO could be lying to me. Jim Cramer could be lying to me. But when I look at the chart, I'm going to look at the flow of money, all right? And I'm going to sit there and go, hmm, wow. Given what I know about charts, bottoming tails, topping tails, volume, etc., okay, that likely won't happen right? It likely won't happen. Therefore, I think it's a good bet. Tiger Woods in his prime. Doesn't, he doesn't win every tournament. There's a good chance, though, he's going to win that tournament 50-50 per se, which is pretty good in golf, okay? So the chart's going to tell me those things, okay? So when you look, for example, at a credit spread, well, how would I know if this credit spread makes sense? I need to look at the chart of the SPY, the SPX, What's the daily chart of the SPX look like? What is it likely to do in the next 24 to 48 hours? What's it likely to do? And I'm going to base my credit spread off of what it's likely going to do. And we have stop losses for the times when we're wrong, right? So in this particular case, we were right, right? It's only a two, two contract credit spread, right? But the point simply is, yeah, right now, Jerry, the spreads are crazy. And when you say back then, it wasn't that long ago. <laughs> but anyway, I hear what you're saying. Um, but anyway, um, we're looking at the chart. You guys, you guys kind of get in the picture. And you can be fairly accurate with credit spreads, right? I don't have the updated one here. But you can be relatively accurate looking at those charts, okay? More options, daily options, working on some new stuff here. All right, with Sean, ETFs traded with options. You can be fairly accurate. How do I know? Because the results don't lie. But how are we trading those? What are we basing our decisions off of? Well, when it comes to options, two things. The chart, which tells us what I think the next likely direction is going to be, and then the premium. How much do I get for being right versus being wrong? Okay, and in this case, in a year period, more than doubled a $30,000 account in a year. All right, I should probably say put account in there. All right, more than doubled a $30,000 account in a year. Trading options. Lots of different ways to trade options. Puts, calls, iron condors, credit spreads. All, and way more than that even. Vertical spreads, you name it. Okay, all kinds, but they're all based off of the chart. Okay, they're all based off the chart. So for example, and again, some of you that were with me here recently saw this one. Here's an example, and I took a few things out, right? Here's an example of intraday trading stocks on the right-hand side, SFIX, Apple, Redfin, but then here's some, some calls on Snapchat, right? Here's a put on GLD. Over here, SPX, ZM, right? So this is what well-rounded trading looks like because Deep Row is a swing trade back when Deep Row was doing really well and hopefully it gets back to there. This one is, this is a swing trade. This is a call, 
Okay, it's an options play. Down here is another call. This DD is an intraday trade. So right here we have three different vehicles. We have intraday trading, we have swing trading, and we have options trading. And you can swing trade your options too, obviously, right? You can day trade the option, you could swing trade the option, okay? And why is that important? It's important because when one doesn't do well, another one likely will. It's on, it would be unusual to have three or four of your different vehicles in trading all shitting the bed at the same time. Certainly possible. But it's also possible they could all be doing well at the same time. So here's Unmall, for example, talking about, hey, I made 21 grand last month, and I didn't set the world on fire. It wasn't a great month. In fact, intraday trading stunk. But I made up for it with other styles of trading. And even though it wasn't his best month by any stretch, it was enough to get what you need done, pay your bills, do whatever, not, not pull back your P&L, so to speak, still move in the right direction. But what if, what if he didn't trade options or what if he didn't swing trade? This 21 grand may have been five grand or seven grand or something of that nature. And maybe next month he makes 30 grand day trading and only five grand swing trading, right? But as long as you get where you need to be, you're moving in the right direction, okay? And that's what's important. Example, we just talked a little bit, for example, right here about this SFIX, Apple Red. Those are intraday trades, all right? Then we saw some of the puts and calls over here, and we saw some swing trades over here. And then you can see why, for example, in the newsletter. I got to get an updated version of this, right? Beating the market by a lot, a whole lot, quadruple, quintuple, whatever it is. And it doesn't take a lot of time to do swing trading either. And you don't have to sit and stare at your computer, especially with the new trade manager coming out, okay? Here's another great example. All right, some of you guys saw this with me this weekend. This is a trader here at, at Live Traders who went to our mentorship with us. And this is mostly stocks, but there are some options filtered in here, all right? And even though there's still some options, this person still had three bad months that year. But a $100 risk to make $29,719? That's 300 R. 300 R. Day trading and a little bit of options. It's like 80-20 here. 80% 80 day trading, 20% options here. Okay? Now, imagine doing this three, four, five years in a row, starting with a $30,000 account and making 30,000. This is two people you've seen in the last five slides that started with 30 grand and doubled their money in a year's time. Now imagine you take 60 grand, 59,700, and now double that. Now you made 60,000 this year. Now next year, you now have $120,000. Now imagine doubling that. And all of a sudden it took you three or four years and now you're in the big boy league, right? Now you're in the big boy league. Here's another example, okay? This, 98%, 98.7% to be exact, making money swing trading. Look at the scalp trading. Made 276% scalp trading. This person has four different accounts that they're trading with. And every one of the worst account was only, only up 34%. This is what being a well-rounded trader can do for you. Swing trading, Intraday trading at 276%, options trading, trading their IRA, okay? Think about that for a second. I really want you to think about it. How many years do you have to put up these kind of numbers to really have a lot of money? Not very many. When you're making 100% a year swing trading or two to 300% a year intraday trading, it doesn't take a lot of years to build yourself a really nice nest egg. The kind of nest egg would likely take somebody else 25 or 30 years to make at their, at their job, not investing, not trading, not doing any of those things. You know, putting their five grand a year away, five grand a year away, five grand a year away, whatever it is. So this is just somebody who took it to a whole nother level and said, you know what? I'm gonna intraday trade, I'm gonna swing trade, and I'm gonna core trade my IRA as well. Why not? Yeah, exactly. You could retire in three to five years. Now, will every year be 276%? No, but what if next year's only 100%? Well, it's pretty good because now you doubled an account that was already up 276%, okay? So guys, focus.
right? Focus on your discipline. Focus on one of them, one vehicle, one discipline in trading, all right? Don't inundate yourself with too much when you're starting, but after you start gaining some experience, and you sh that experience should be fairly easy in the beginning, especially with stocks, because let's say you start with stocks, and you understand, for example, 15-minute charts, 60-minute charts, daily charts really well. Well, to move up to a weekly chart or a monthly chart is pretty easy. So swing trading is, is pretty much the next easiest thing to do if you started out with stocks. Now, if you want to learn options, there's going to be a little bit more of a learning curve, but nothing you can't learn in two or three months, right? Give it three months, six months on the high, high side, okay? Now you want to add core trading. Oh, that's pretty easy because now you can add core trading on monthly charts with the stock, or maybe you want to use options for that too. Or maybe you want to use Forex. It's up to you. The sky is the limit. And I think we saw there with different traders using different styles. I mean, Unmall is using pretty much every style you can imagine, okay? Some of those other folks are just simply using stocks, but they're doing it on a daily in terms of intraday as well as swing trading. And other people are using stocks and options, and they're not just using stocks and options, using stocks and options intraday as well as swing as well as core. So of the seven things we talked about, they have about five of them nailed down, all right? So I wanted to talk to you guys because those are the things you should be doing. Start dipping your toes into those things. Start learning those things. It's something I wish I would have done much, much sooner uh, with regard to, for example, learning options because I'm still learning credit spreads. As you can see, I'm taking two, you know, two lots, five lots, et cetera. All right. But we talked about this one yesterday, for example. I want to go back and tie this up because we're going to wrap this up here soon. You guys remember this comment? This was yesterday. SQ likely topping here for today. Timestamp is 11.08. When did this happen? About 11.05, 11.06, somewhere around there. I made this comment two minutes after this. Why? Well, look at the 15-minute chart. From yesterday's close, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bars up. Okay? Eight bars up. On the eighth bar, it was the widest bar of the previous seven with the biggest volume spike of the day at the time. Let's go over this one more time because I know this is rocket science. This stock was seven previous bars up and on the eighth bar, it decided to put in the largest bar of the day on the highest volume that this stock has put in in several days or more. And I come out and say, SQ likely topping here for today, okay? There it is on the five minute. It's already grinding higher and then boom, you see this come in match it with the 15 minute oh and then we look at the daily at the 200 ma it's engulfed this which is bullish but it's extended it's tired it ran a marathon today and it fought for every inch of it and now you're sitting right just under the 200 ma put it all together not rocket science now does this mean you should short it not necessarily but it should at least let you know the stock's probably finished going higher. So if you're in it long, it might be a good time to tighten your stop. It might be a good time to take profits. And if you're a scalp trader, maybe, just maybe, you could short this for a short, you know, one, two, three dollar gain. Okay, because it's not quite climactic, but it's very, very strong to the point where you know it's probably going to pull back. And I am not Nostradamus. I'd be pretty old. You know, you understand what I'm getting at. Read the chart. I don't care if it's a Forex chart. I don't care if you're looking for an options play. It's going to be based off of a chart, some capacity. Stop trading, whether erase all this and make it a monthly chart instead of a 15 minute chart. If the monthly chart looks like that and you're in it as a core trade and you've been in it for seven, eight, nine months, imagine every bar here on the 15 minutes. Imagine it's a monthly bar and you've been in this stock for seven, eight months. It is time. It's time to take some off the table and tighten your stop loss, okay? Let the chart speak to you. Don't speak to it. This, this is what I mean. Took the person's name out, don't want to embarrass them. Tesla, five minute, three bar play. This is what they were referring to, really. So on the last slide, I thought we learned, you know, when you're up three bars, think sell. 
When you're up four bars, really think so. And when you're up five bars, really, really think so. Okay? It's actually Hugh. I just didn't want to say anything. I'm just joking. All right? But on a serious note here, super wide range bar. Widest bar of the day is the fourth bar up after a big move. And it's the biggest volume spike of the day. And people just think, oh, well, there's a little resting bar right there. It's got to be a three bar play. Nope. Where it happens how the bar forms, and how it got there matter. And you guys know this because you just went over it this weekend. This is not listening to the chart. This is you talking at the chart. No, the the chart talks to you. You don't talk to it, all right? It does what it does. It says what it says. The only question is, are you listening to what it's saying, all right? In this case, this is not a three bar play. This, this is you listening to the chart. Wide bar breaks over this air, this pivot. Wide bar breaks this pivot. Note, it was up a ton of bars. By the way, guys, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine bars. On the ninth bar, it had a volume spike at resistance. Okay, let's do this real quick. I like making adjustments in real time. Okay, let's do this real quick. I should have put this in. Just do that. Okay. What's the expectation right there? What's the expectation? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, tenth bar up, resistance to the left, biggest bar of the entire move, biggest volume spike. Oh my gosh, it's a shocker. It pulled back. I can't believe it did that. Oh, or is it a three bar play? No. It's a pullback. Let the chart tell you. Okay, don't argue with the chart because the chart's never wrong. It's extended into resistance and it's a wide range bar extended into resistance and it's a wide range bar extended into resistance after a volume spike. There's only one real possibility here. It's going to pull back. The other secondary is it peekaboos over, then it pulls back. And in this case, it pulled back. So that's not a surprise what this stock did, okay? Then after resting long enough, pulling back 50%, the stock puts in a wide range igniting bar on igniting volume. It puts in a resting bar, although not resting volume. Another resting bar, which actually did have resting volume, bar number three here had resting volume, and then it takes off. Chops around, goes at it again. Just let the chart Let the chart tell you what it's going to do. Don't tell it. And you know what a prime example of that is? A great example of this. Stupid is, stupid does, sir. I fell for this one myself. I took ZM with you guys. This was not a good trade. Okay? Now, can we sit here and talk about some of the good things we did? Yeah. For example, ZM was moving lower. Okay? It popped or it tried to bounce and then left a big topping tail. That, that right there is kind of the drug. It's like, hey, here's a little taste. Why do they want to give you a little taste? Because they want you hooked on it. So in this case, it tries to bounce and you're like, wow. It tried and failed and left a topping tail and came right back down to the low of the day. And on the one minute, you're going, all right, a little aggressive, but I love the topping tail. It's about to break the low that, oops, shit, I forgot to look at the higher time frame. Damn it. This is the pre-market chart here. It pulled back to 250. It bounced shallow and then pulled back to 250 again, left a bottoming tail and goes green, 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 green. So what is, what is the problems here? We are extended into support. One bar, two bar, three bars, four bars down right into support. And the fourth bar is what? Probably the widest bar, if not tied for, but the widest bar of the entire move. But we didn't see that because we're so fixated on the one minute chart. I forgot to look, in this case, the higher time frame being the five minute chart. And I did say in real time when it was happening, what I don't like about this is five bars down, four bars down. But what I did not look at was the pre-market double bottom low where the stock bounced. Well, that was an oversight on my part. Thankfully, we only lost a quarter of an R here, didn't lose a full R. But this is not a trade we should have been taking because we're down four bars. That's bad enough. But we're down four bars into double bottom support. 
this was not our finest moment, right? Read the chart. The chart will tell you what you should be trading and you can take this chart or these charts in different time frames and trade different vehicles. If you wanted to trade options on ZM, you could have done that. If you want to take the ZM daily chart and maybe swing or core trade it, maybe, I'm just commenting. If you want to move on to crypto or Forex, you can do that. But what are you still doing? You're still reading the charts. I don't care what it is you're trading. You're still looking at these red and green candlesticks in the context of the current time frame in relationship to the higher time frame. Remember the forest from the trees? Everything is in this chart. Every person who traded this anywhere in the world today, I don't care what their wealth was, how rich or poor they were, if they traded ZM today, bought or sold any shares of ZM, they are in this chart. Whether it's the CEO of Goldman Sachs, whether it's Warren Buffett or some kid living in a tent in San Francisco, they're in this chart. Let the chart be your guide, okay? And you can do this with any vehicle you want. Forex, crypto, options, Beanie Babies, Pet Rocks, Justin Bieber's record sales. Learn to be a diversified, well-rounded trader. Specialize in one thing for your first three, six, nine, 12 months. Once you learn that thing to a fairly nice high level, then start expanding your horizons. Because when you look at certain stocks, we wake up every day and we go, man, the gap list isn't very good today. And you're right. Some days it just isn't. Well, what are we going to do? What if that happens for a week or two in a row? We're just not going to make any money that month. Yeah, if that's all we trade. But what if we could add some other things to that? Right? For example, last month, swing trading went pretty well for you guys. Day trading, eh, not terrible, but not great either. Okay. So that's what I want you to take from this how powerful these charts are. Being able to read these charts gives you an insight into all styles, all vehicles of trading, whether it's Forex or crypto or options or stocks and all time frames. They're that powerful. They mean that much. Okay. So I hope you guys learned a little bit about trading different vehicles, understanding that charts are your guide. Don't speak to it. Let it speak to you. Be open-minded and objective when it does, okay? And that this will hopefully make you a better, more diversified, well-rounded trader, which will hopefully result in you making more money. I'm Jared Wesley of Live Traders. We'll get back at it again next week.